Welcome to Gaming the Podcast. I am John Robertson, joined by Stace Harmon, and this week we're talking rogue likes and rogue lights. We're going to be going over our take on the two genres, what they do well, what they do less well, and how their design choices have influenced how we play games. Now, there is some debate as to exactly what makes something a rogue like or rogue light, but we're going to use a differentiation that rogue lights include some form of persistent material progression, and rogue likes do not. So, in a rogue like, your first and your uh one thousandth ten thousandth run will have you start with the same gear same available actions in a rogue light you gain access to leveling up and obtaining ways to customize your customize your loadout and and that sort of thing um so stace rogue like rogue lights which do you prefer do you even have a preference um well i do i have i prefer rogue lights um and it has I think quietly become one of my go-to genres without me being fully aware that I'm seeking out those kinds of games, uh, which perhaps speaks to something you've just alluded to about how they've influenced um, many other genres as well and how there are many other kind of roguelite elements and roguelike elements in other in other games too. But yeah, when I look at my anything, Steam stats or PlayStation game stats or whatever it is, like there's a lot of games on those lists that feature 100 plus hours of play that fall into one of those categories. So mm-hmm. games like Spelunky and Returnal and Hades and Slay the Spire and FTL and Dead Cells and all of these games, they frequently are at kind of the top outside of maybe strategy, specifically civilization, really. Those are the games that kind of occupy the the highest play times. Um on mm. almost any platform that I own, Switch as well. So yeah, roguelites is definitely um, kind of the thing that does it for me. There's lots of reasons why that is, but I'm interested. Does that like how does that compare to your experience of of these two kind of sub genres? Um, I mean, rogue lights are certainly what I've played more. I but I, so it, so my take on which one I like more. So I clearly like rogue light lights <laughs> lights more than rogue <laughs> likes from a from the perspective that i played them more and i, I played more of them and i've played more hours mm. across there them. are more of them though, yeah there are right? many more of them yeah. yeah um however theoretically i think i like the purity of concept of a rogue like more than i like a rogue light i feel mm. I feel like the designer is better able, in theory, in a rogue like to provide the exact kind of challenge that they want to provide the player because everything's consistent, right? So you know mm. exactly what the player have got has got at all times. So you can then very sophisticatedly and very skillfully design a world to challenge for those abilities. You, it's harder to do that in a rogue light because you don't know what the player's got. Uh, mm. And the player will be constantly leveling up to or gaining some means of advantage um, to help them dominate a world that doesn't level up, you know? Yeah. Um, I think those, and that's where things like, I think there are more phased, there are more discrete phased um, kind of levels in a rogue light in terms of your play and your where you are in the cycle of that game. And there's, you know, there's not just you play through the main game, here's a load of end game content in a more sort of more traditional like open world game or a single player adventure game. There's more like discrete beginning, middle, end, and then there's like a bunch of extra stuff you can do on top of that. Roguelike is is more of a, I think more of a, a discrete cycle and a and a one off thing. Something like FTL. Yeah. Um yeah, and again, you know, we can get caught up in the distinctions between these things, but theoretically, you know, FTL isn't a rogue like um, purely, but it's more so than it is a rogue light uh, because you do do that thing. You do you start over, you unlock ships, but those ships aren't necessarily better. They each come with their own challenges. So, and as you say, that can be designed for. So, if it doesn't matter which ship you pick, that ship is going to have stuff that it's good at and stuff that it's not so good at. Um, and the design yeah. encompasses that discrete number of ships in that game. But each cycle you go through, you're starting at the beginning and you're going through to the end. And yeah, you're not gaining any massive advantage um, aside from knowledge and I guess particular player experience Yeah, I when think, you go through each loop. I think the other thing from my 
um, my experience and my sort of playing style across these two genres is <clears throat> rogue. This has never really played out in in practice, but I think rogue likes have <clears throat> a longer shelf life, not in terms of maybe hours played, but time spent on them like year to year or time spent mm. potentially playing them year to year because <clears throat> um because they're the same all the time so uh when i went back to play hades after not playing it for like six months there was a mm. big learning period because it was like okay i gotta remember what all the boons i've got i gotta remember the weapons how they interact what's it little... but in spelunky or whatever i can go and play that mm -hmm. two years later i don't have to do that i can just jump in start playing yeah. so so in that sense hades feels like a more of a, like a normal game in a way and it's like it's like if you stop playing dishonored two-thirds of the yeah. way through and then come Bare back six exit. months later yeah, yeah you've got to relearn yeah. it again but you yeah. don't have to do that in a rogue like because it's consistent it's the same and you start from the same point every time you've got the same weapons and stuff that you've always ever had you there's no um yeah either diluting down of the concept or building up of the of the sophistication of your available actions whichever way you want to look at it yeah and i would say yeah and that bears out for me as well i would say that i've been back to something like ftl or darkest dungeon more times i've kind of i've had more periods of play of those games more individual periods of play of those games um than i have something like hades where i've put in hundreds of hours into hades but there will come a point where i stop playing that and the the likelihood of me going back to it is far less than you know i'm not i don't think i'm going to look at it on my list and think i'm going to boot that up for those reasons but whereas i might look at ftl or darkest dungeon and think yeah, i'm going to dip back into that and i know that it's yeah it's not as steep a learning curve i mean there's, there's obviously still stuff you have to remember but it's a i can do a couple of cycles of ftl and get back on that horse quite quickly um so yeah but nonetheless it is the roguelites that i play I get lost in them. You know, it's like it, there is, there is definitely something in them and it's different for each game. And most of the time I can identify what it is. There's definitely something in them that is very, uh, very appealing to me. And that does keep me coming back to it over and over again. And that's, yeah, I mean, two of my favorite recent games, Returnal and Hades have many roguelike qualities. Um, yeah, I think in a lot of ways, like roguelikes, are almost like the perfect embodiment for the and for the grand promise that a lot of people see video games as having in that they're a power fantasy in that you consistently get stronger and improve your skill over time and allow you to um action that for progress and rewards within a world or within um a setting um but you get to feel supremely powerful again and again and again and again because you're going back to the start each time and absolutely wiping the floor with those original enemies. So mm. your ability to see progress in a roguelite is so front and center. Like it's almost more than other games because the difficulty curve doesn't go up in a roguelite. Whereas in like an RPG or something, the difficulty curve goes up. So your progress is your feeling of empowerment is muted by the fact the enemies get tougher. Mm. um as the game goes but in a rogue like that doesn't really happen you get stronger the game stays the same so it's got almost like an inverse difficulty curve yeah well yes it has yeah and there's a actually yeah that is a very good point and there's a couple of things on that and i think that 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 is has long been a problem for things like big sprawling rpgs where yeah you're right you know you get access to all this high level gear and super strong magic attacks, but at the same time, the level, the enemies are, are, are scaling at the same time, and so you never really feel proportionally more powerful. You're just you're getting to you play with actions. new toys. Yeah. yeah, you have more options, more actions. You have more choices in how you're going to deal with something, um, but you don't necessarily feel more powerful beyond the fact that you know that you know the numbers coming out of enemies' heads are now much bigger, but proportionately they're not any different you know you were doing one out of a hundred damage and now you're doing a hundred out of a thousand you know it's it's just it is or ten thousand is whatever it is so um yeah the, it kind of solves that for the people that want that to be solved because it does give you that power the thing though that it also does the flip side of that and this is one of the things i really like about it is that there's not a lot of 
it kind of takes the training wheels off a lot quicker or in some cases just doesn't even put them on. Whereas in a lot of video games, you can spend the first couple of hours being taught how to use a controller, basically. Being taught that, oh, R2 is to attack or shoot or do whatever it might be, just as it has been in you know every game since the last five years, 10 years. Um, in a in a roguelite, it's like they deliberately don't tell you stuff. It's there's a you're going to learn how to do this. Yes, this button is attack. Now go and work out how to do that, how the how to utilize it, and where the windows are where you're invincible, how this weapon differs to this one. There aren't these long winded tutorials. It's just like get on with it. You learn through play, and it's much more immediate. So whilst the longer term difficulty for the start of the game goes down because you do see it again and again and you get more powerful the that initial thing of it's just it often feels quite refreshing to me it's not i don't have to go into this vr training room to learn how to play this game it's just go go at it like you're gonna learn you're going to die but guess what that's okay because we've designed dying into this game that's like this perennial problem of death in video games is like we're using that yeah, in the best examples we're using it as part of the game. So yeah, so do you think that yeah, so you think it's that then that that it is part of the core fundamental of the game rather than, or is it a case that these genres tend to be aimed at more hardcore people so they can get away from having the very mainstream you know cyberpunk Assassin's Creed style tutorials which might be someone's first ever game that they've played so they need to account for that whereas a roguelike probably isn't going to be that yes and i think in the same way perhaps um that something like an art house indie film is going to be able to take more risks it's going to be able to be more deliberately obscure and not you know, it, for one thing, it doesn't cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make, whereas a big mainstream blockbuster release, you can't risk there being anybody left behind. You can't risk there being anybody not understanding or feeling stupid. Everybody that goes to see that has to feel good. They have, to, and it, so it has to, it has to cater to the lowest common denominator and talk to us in a language that we very well understand. But the problem with that, I mean, there's a place for all of those kinds of things, but the problem with that for me is that it, it's not often a a conversation to carry on this analogy that I'm that interested in having. Cause it's like, well, I, I want, I want things to be a bit prickly. You know, I want things to, I want to have to go through this a couple of times in the case of films. Sometimes I want to have to watch them. I don't need it tied up at the end with a big bow. I want to watch it again and to see those things that I didn't see the, the first time around. And in the case of games, yeah, just let me go at it and, you know, either I'll work it out um, and probably gain tremendous satisfaction from it. Or I won't, um, and it won't be for me. But that's okay because you don't need to, you know, grab every player that you you um, are exposed to because it's not it's not that kind of product. It's not well, perhaps it's not a product. Full stop. It's a uh, an artistic expression. I mean, that's a whole a whole other thing, you know. Um, so yeah, so I do. Yeah, I do think it's it's that it doesn't. Ha- they don't have to appeal. They can be. Yes, they are. Perhaps for. Uh, I don't know if it's like harder core, I don't know. The- to phrase it a different way then, would it yeah. still be a, would it still count as a roguelike road like if it did have those tutorial elements and it was aiming to a much fresher, more um, lower experience level gamer? Would it still I mean, it, be a roguelike? It still would, yeah, but because there, uh, there's ways around that, or well, not around it, but there's ways to accommodate that. And uh, Grifflands does this really well, the card battler. Um, because that uh, up front says, do you want to play this, which is the introduction? And this is going to tell you how to play these kinds of games. And if you're not familiar with these kinds of games, we strongly recommend it. Or do you want to skip that and go straight to effectively the meat of the game? So it's, it's a, a different section of the game. It's like a yeah, module. It's that just, can a, be... it's like a thing that's, yeah, exactly. It's a thing that's been bolted on the front and that, you know, you might still feel like, well, I want to, you know, I want to kind of, uh, indulge in this world i want to kind of luxuriate in this world that's been created that i'm interested in so i'm just going to play it from the beginning and see that introduction but you can just say no it's that's cool and you know i've played 200 hours of slay the spire i'm i'm kind of set for for card battlers um let me just get on with it so it can absolutely have that it doesn't need to be obtuse it doesn't need to be deliberately um you know it doesn't need to be to the exclusion of people at all no Um, i'm trying to think of other ones i mean monster train is another one mm -hmm. Uh, I believe at the start of that, you there is a tutorial you have to go through, but it, but it's just like your first run, but it just includes 
some some notes on have you played that there's like three levels yeah. Yeah. yeah and i think at the start you it does say this is what this is what this level does and it's but but it's very brief yeah. Yeah, and it's the, not the like absence, it's not like a pulled out tutorial, like a no, VR sure. style tutorial. And the absence of a tutorial is is not, you know, it, or the inclusion of one isn't isn't for me a deciding factor in and of itself. But the it's the freedom to not have to spend x number of hours. It, you know, if you're looking at a more linear A to B Uncharted type experience, you don't need to spend the first couple of hours of that fifteen hour experience teaching people how to do stuff. Um, because because in that case you die and that's a problem that's a, an obstacle to progress you die and you have to redo the stuff that you've done to get from a to b in roguelites you know in returnal you're going to die i mean the clues you know not the clue but the, the the name of it for goodness sake returnal like you're going to die you're going to return you're going to go at it again and again and again and there's the of course there are debates as to how successful these games are at doing that and people I absolutely understand would level criticism at Returnal for that, that you don't make enough progress in your runs to justify um, the fact that when you die, you've got to start from the beginning. It's like, well, what have I really gained there? Where, you know, maybe I've got a bit more ether, a bit more of this currency that is one of the few things that does persist. Um, Yeah, so that's an interesting point because I think, so failed runs, right? mm. It's it's something where rogue lights and rogue lights obviously... I think I said like twice then, rogue like and rogue light, <laughs> um, uh, differentiate themselves, right? So yes, that, that waste of a time, that waste of time idea that, oh, that I died mm. on that run in return or <laughs> and I don't get enough ether back. But uh, so is that how you perceive them then? Because failed runs in Spelunky, okay, in Spelunky, you cannot unlock shortcuts and stuff, but like, but compared to most other rogue light it's much lighter than it is lighter um <laughs> um uh so failed runs in that can feel in spelunky can feel like quote unquote air quotes a waste of time i wouldn't agree with that but mm. um because you don't have any persistent material progress i use the word material because there are some games that include like story secrets and stuff but but you, that you can unlock as you go but still when you start the run mm. again that's all you've got you don't have any Oh, upgrades or whatever yeah um but i'm still putting yeah. them into the more like category because it's not a material improvement it's a yeah, it's a sure. law based yeah. um expansion but so failed but failed runs in spelunky is like i think saying a failed run in spelunky is a waste of time is like saying to that footballer in training that running up and down the wing doing that dribble 15 times but you didn't succeed today is a waste of time it's like yeah but i got mm. closer yeah like yeah so practice and failure are a means to improvement in those yeah. games rather than um you know 10 10 xp or a new weapon well it's, it's a whatever. matter of perspective isn't it and it's funny that you yeah that you phrased it that way because i was thinking along those lines um earlier today before this podcast i was thinking about like that very uh that very cute quote that depending on your frame of reference could either be Einstein, or might be Vaz from Far Cry Three, who says oh, the definition common, commonly um, <laughs> the de- compared, <laughs> put in the same put in the same box. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And it's like, and there's we have there's lots of us that will look at that and go, oh, yeah, I really I get that, I understand that, it really speaks to me. But that's a matter of perspective because you can say the exact same thing and say, well, from a different perspective, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is just called practice. It's just doing something to practice at it and at some point you will crack it or you will make yeah. that progress as long as so, you've got your technique down i suppose and you just keep practicing because if your technique's wrong and you keep doing the same thing then you're not gonna well, but you might find your own way you know like it does it might depends do. you know it's, yeah. it's specific it depends on what you're talking about sure where there's a binary right wrong kind of thing sure but so and that linking it back to the failed runs thing i think even I mean, it's failed. I suppose, in what sense are we saying it's failed? It's failed in the sense that you haven't got to failed the and you end. You haven't quote unquote gained. You haven't any. succeeded. Yeah. You haven't won. Yeah. But but that is once upon a time what playing video games looked like, right? Like once upon a time when I played, I don't know, Super Mario Brothers, the original, or Ghouls and Ghosts. You failed and you started again and you what you had nothing to show for it. You'd learn. All you'd done. And in those cases, 
that's different because that's effectively rote learning. You're just trying to learn a pattern. You're just trying to get to a point of, I understand exactly what's going to happen at this moment. And I just need to remember to do this instead of X. I need to zig instead of zag. Um, but that thing of doing something over and over again, like you, you wouldn't, that wasn't called a failed run in, you know, original Mario. That was just, that was just playing the game. Failure. <laughs> it was yeah. just, <laughs> that was just how you played the game. And that's changed a lot. You know, Mario has become more of an A to B kind of adventure in the sense that it's incremental progress and you stop playing at a certain point and, oh, look, we've got save games now, so you don't have to go through the whole thing in one go. Um, yeah, so I was going to say, so it has, so roguelikes likes are, um, they're basically arcade games, but you don't put coins in anymore. Well, the likes plus, one, plus they have persistent progress so. for like yeah, yeah i yeah. mean lights is like yeah they're more like perhaps sort of modern like arcade games you know particularly in japan where you have like a you know a little card or a memory stick thing that you take in and that's where your progress is you plug that into yeah. the machine you put your money I mean, in and then it picks up where you left off or you're leveled up or whatever it is so yeah I um, the difference yeah. there is that arcade machine stuff are the same all those old games that you sell are the same every time but then there's no random element to them. There's no procedural no, generation. Sure. And the they're enemies not, are the same. Yeah, they're not like, roguelites or, or, or likes in that sense. But it's just going back to that notion of what a, what failure is, what it, a failed run looks like. And it's like, well, that's just how a lot of us played games. It When well, we didn't consider it failing, we just consider it, you know, you didn't expect to sit down and finish a game like that. I think you'd be disappointed if you did sit down and finish Mario in one sitting and be like, oh, okay, great. I've seen everything there is to see on on that one. You you die, you go back, you get better, you learn, you you know, you keep playing, and then you perhaps look start looking for secrets and and all the rest of it. So a failed run, um, it depends on the circumstances. I think a failed run in Returnal used to be a much bigger deal when you had to sit there for two or three hours at a time because you couldn't suspend the cycle as you can now. You effectively there was no save state. You had to sit down and play that in one go. You could suspend the game, but you couldn't use your PlayStation for anything else because you couldn't put on another game because the run would be yeah, gone. Yeah, there were some issues with that as well around resting because, you know, you can put the PS5 in rest and you can turn it up, turn it but on. But it and might go, but, update. Well, yeah, and, yeah. and early, uh, suppose I didn't have this issue, but there was some issue with the PlayStation supposedly on putting it into rest day and it would just turn itself off anyway at some yeah. point and then people yeah. would turn it on and it's all gone and yeah and that's you know that's going to be a killer so there's like surrounding environmental factors that can make things hurt more it can make it sting more when you you fail a run or you you know you've something happens that means your fun has been interrupted something as external to you as has happened that means it's it's all gone um so what about so you've played more rogue lights than me. So what's so given that I would argue that rogue lights have by definition an end, right? Like so in the sense of yeah. that they because they begin giving you things and then at some point they stop giving you things, it has ended at that point. So then you can, of course, keep going in and do keep going run, run after run, mix and match your abilities and items and whatever you want to do. Mm. Um, but because they've started giving you things and then they've ended giving you things, the game does seem to end at that point. And it's up to you. You can carry on as much as you want, just like you can run around the world in you know some open world RPGs. But the game's over. Yeah, well... Yes. I mean, there is an end to... Well, but, well, I guess it's because they start giving you progress and then they stop your progress. Yeah. There's an end. So, okay. So for me, one of the things that's the most appealing, I think, about roguelites is that, uh, yes, there is an end. So there will be end game content that effectively. So let's take like Returnal or Hades. It applies to both as an example. But in Returnal, the end technically, I mean, initially you start off thinking the end is to get through the first three biomes and it's you beat a boss and you're like, oh, I've done it. And then biomes four, five and six open up and then you can choose whether you start and do one, two and three or four, five and six. You can't do one to six. I, whether they'll patch that in at some point, I don't know. It seems like something they could. The problem with that is that the progression you've made in one to three, if you had that carry over into four to six, arguably you'd be too powerful and all the rest of it. Um, but the game then kind of morphs and changes and your expectations change with it. 
And then you finish four to six, and then there's these fragments that you need to find in each biome. So then you go back looking in each biome for these particular collectibles. And then once you found those, you need to complete the game again to get a different ending. And all of this, the point of all of this is that the game for me does a very good job of changing the conditions of the test, changing your focus, giving you a different way to play the game, giving you a different way to look at the environment. So you start with like trying to just get through it and survive. And you get to a point where you're no longer thinking about that stuff. Like you're good enough that you're going to survive. So then you're looking for specific things. You're thinking about the biome that you're in, where might such and such hidden thing be? Okay, I'm going to kind of do a run where that's what I'm, that's very much what I'm focused on. You get to the end of that. There's then, you know, things like collectibles as in glyphs or data entries or stuff like that. But all of that, even when all of that is over and you've leveled every single weapon and you've done all of that, because there's been this constantly evolving way that I've been, my relationship with the game has constantly evolved and I've looked at different things throughout, it makes me more likely to come up with my own conditions for the test it makes it more likely for me to come up with self-imposed self-imposed things of like well perhaps i'm going to try a speed run you know perhaps that's the thing that i'm now going to do i'm going to choose to turn that timer on on the screen and have that show and i'm going to set my own goalposts and you can of course do that in any game yeah i was going to say why would you be more likely to do that in a rogue light rather than a rogue like well rogue light or like but the but the it's that versus other types of games where a light is constantly changing its focal point whereas a game like the last of us is not the the last you know which i also love and i'll play through that but i'm getting a very different thing from it so it makes me more likely i'm not really interested in going through the last of us and like trying to take no damage for example that's not what that game is for me whereas it's a thing that i would consider doing in a returnal or hades the game doesn't ask you to do that it doesn't give you any reward for doing that but it's done so well at shifting its focal point and saying there's many different ways to play this game that i'm more likely to find fun in doing that than i would in in the last of us the last of us i would feel like okay i've done that um but what okay so know. what about like a middle ground game then like dark souls where it's got a lot of rogue lighty elements in it but it is also has a grander structure that's more similar to a more traditional video game with a start middle and end various bosses and end to the story like last of us has yeah, that for me, I would lean more towards like The Last of Us in the way that I play that. I would go through it once, and I know in like Demon Souls, for example, the the remake, or and the, of course the original, there's a whole bunch of new game pluses. It will recognise that you've been through the game, and then you'll get new game plus and new game plus plus and etc. And it will recognise each time you go through it. But that for me, That's I go a- through that game, and I'm kind of done with it. Um, yeah, I think that in those games, it's mainly a level scaling thing. Because the enemies mm. in Dark Souls mm. and Demon Souls stay the same level until you go New Game Plus, and yeah. so so you'll out level them, and you need to you need to be you need to have a new uh, threat, basically. Yeah, and so I think it, there's there's that. It just like my na- my relationship with these games evolves with both likes and lights, because it happens with likes as well. You you the thing that evolves is you. The thing that levels up is you. Um. But it has like a, it has like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs structure to it for me that other games don't have that you, like you start being very focused at the very bottom of the pyramid pyramid on a particular thing. And that is just surviving. That is just like getting to a point where you, your needs have been met and you, you have got enough health and you've picked up, you know, a new weapon and you, it gets to the point where you can do that stuff almost you know blindfolded you've got all of that sorted out and so then your focus your motivation shifts elsewhere and it becomes about well i'm going to dig into this thing and maybe i want to i want to achieve mastery over it or maybe i'm going to go digging into the the secrets of it and the best roguelites for me are the ones where that's all built in and it's ready and waiting for you and it has the ability to change your focus so it's like you might i don't know in the in a most basic example you might go into room two in dead estate and um there's a coffin and you've got no way of opening that coffin there's a big padlock on it it's very evident that you are meant to open it at some point and it builds in this idea that here's this thing 
you are not going to have to you're not going to have to travel in any anywhere like geographically you're not going to have to go to the other end of the game world to find this key and come back here at some point you're going to find a way of opening this thing and we're just going to let you know that by just dangling it here and that can be on your mind as a thing later on that you can focus on it kind of builds in that like the mystery and the uh the the things to shoot for the things to try and attain are kind of there waiting for you when you're ready to get to that point where that's what your focus is. But initially your focus is how does this gun work? What's its range? How do I move around this space? And so that's a, and the tight loop of that, of going back in and over and over and over and over again and exploring that more is a thing that I, that for whatever reason I really respond to more so than, I don't know, like a, a longer winded story where it's like I, my key focus here for the last of us is to see the beginning middle end of this story and experience how that feels um yeah so what about how the, so some of these elements um <clears throat> also those concepts that you mentioned that appear in other games that are not typically well they're not at all defined as rogue like or rogue lights mm. because i'm i'm thinking and like uh, Look, this might sound a bit out there, but the like battle royale games, um, Fortnite, PUBG, whatever, Apex, mm. um, less so Warzone, but we'll talk about that. Oh, well, we, we can talk about why, but um, they have almost all of these elements that are being spoken about. That you reset to zero every single time you go in, your initial need is find a weapon so I can stay alive because you've got nothing. Okay, mm. in, in Apex, you've got some powers for your character, which may or may not be capable of dealing damage um and then you're slowly working through the map um being careful and i know it doesn't have to proceed your generation the map is the same every time but on a conceptual level you're still in a randomized environment because the enemies that you're going up against will do completely different things every single time they there'll be a different uh, mix of certain characters in there so there's stuff you have to watch out for is going to be different people can be attacked by different angles and um all this time and there's and they're even i guess they're more rogue like than light because there's no progression yeah. that's consistent yes you level up and that's a consistent level up, but it's just cosmetics you just unlock cosmetic stuff you can unlock yeah. new characters which give you new abilities um but that's no different to like nuclear throne where you earn you unlock new characters with new abilities and everyone mm. no one disagrees that that's not a rogue like um <clears throat> so i wonder what the I wonder if the how how meaningful some of these definitions are now that certain elements of the of the core roguelike roguelike structure, i.e., dying and restarting, with largely the same. Okay, in the roguelike, you have progress that you can make to change how you enter each map. But you know, I'm thinking like Dark Souls, like we said, you die, you get your souls back, you level up, you go again, you go again, you go again. An inscription. Um, you there is an end but there is like a story ending but you're going again and again and again same bosses same uh, it's, it's, it's like a slate aspire kind of like map mm, element mm. um <clears throat> so how i suppose how how important is it still to talk about roguelike and rogue likes as discrete genres in their own space when actually their gameplay concepts are becoming every year more common across all games yeah, and I think at some point that distinction will change. At the moment, despite, you know, the original rogue to which both like and light are appended to make a, a different thing, a sub sort of genre of that, is 40 years old. I mean, it like, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But at some but they, Oh, I'm they sure everyone always... that uses the term is well aware and oh, very experienced sure. with the original. I mean, rogue. for a long time, I did, you know, about, I don't know how long ago, I. I understood that rogue was actually a game and rogue like is literally means like rogue like the game rogue um so yeah that's 40 odd years old and so there's um there's a period they have been popularized i think i would argue in the last sort of 10 years you know binding of isaac was one of the first roguelike games that i really got stuck into and 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 again, people will argue, you know, that it's not turn-based, there's real-time elements, et cetera. But again, in terms of just keeping the distinctions reasonable for our for our conversation, 
Barn of Isaac is more roguelike than rogue light. Um, and that's a game that I played, you know, a hundred plus hours of easily and really got stuck into. And I think that's one of those kind of, of the modern style of rogue likes and roguelites. That's one of the sort of the, the forefathers several generations removed from from the original rogue but it's still a you know in the modern gaming landscape it is sort of the one of the the originators of yeah. this popularization and, and, effort yeah and i would say so i played by isaac but not a huge not a huge amount by any means the one that i played a lot of is rogue legacy and i would say rogue legacy is arguably the first rogue light because I can't, I don't, I can't, or at least it popularized it. I, I don't know if there's another example of a rogue light game coming out before Rogue Legacy that was so, that was as anywhere close to as popular th- as that and included very obvious persistent upgrades. Like you upgrade your castle mm. and stuff. Um, it's not just the legacy bit of your, um, mm. mm-hmm. of, the, of your gene pool continuing. It's like there's, you build stuff, you build permanent structures. Um, yeah. So, and so these games have popularized this thing that we still refer to as roguelike and roguelike. And I think they're in the same way that we don't call things shoot 'em ups anymore. You know, like the, the genre has persistently evolved over decades and we now have more nuance and more established examples of different types of shooters. And we don't, you know, who, yeah, you're you talking about first person. First... Yeah. Cause I, cause shoot em ups is still I mean, used ups, for yeah. like top down Japanese. Sure. And so it's, it's evolved to more, perhaps that bit hasn't evolved. Perhaps everything else has evolved and that, that has retained that thing. But, and in that instance, a bit like with roguelites, I think at the moment in that in- instance, there's an element of, well, what else would you call it? Like we all understand what that means. We all understand that that refers to a specific type of shooter. So why bother changing it yeah. like that's it's what it just, means it's a convenience a of language rather than an actual yeah it's like what are you going to call you know because there's like like don't starve and things that you can you can attach a label to it of a, a roguelike or a lo- roguelite you could say a similar thing for games like i don't know like the long dark but they've evolved to be oh well, that's a survival game and that means its own thing like there's more of these elements yeah. than there are of these other ones that, and so it's sort of like what is it the what is it the most of? Well, Hades is more roguelite than it is anything else. You wouldn't say it's a dungeon crawler because that means a different thing. So, or, you know, sort of popular parlance, it means a different thing. So I think that those words, those labels are still useful to establish this is what we're talking about, but there are their own distinctions each yeah. time. And they do have their own, you know, Hades and Dead Estate are not, they have lots of things in common, but they also have lots of things that are not in common. So it's, but it's just a way of yeah, establishing a conversation or the basis for a conversation, I suppose, or the basis for comparison. Um, yeah. And that's, that's why we still use it, I guess. Cause it's like, why? Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's, they still do have more in common with one another than cause yeah, we're using like the word itself is based on an old game. Um, uh, rather than like i don't know what 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 would be the equivalent like if, around today like um that's a that's a wolfenstein like to like talk about like yeah. a, a certain kind of like corridor shooter you know or like mm-hmm. that's a um well we we have the word beat em up don't we for beat em ups but you know i'm trying to think of other i don't know um that, that, you get it all in uh, across all the video games right like genre definitions are not very helpful a lot of the time because like horror can can like you know yeah. that, that can be so many different things and like darkwood is nothing like outlast or whatever yeah. like they're complete yeah. they're two completely different things or even racing like need for speed and eye racing like they like the deep the, the kind of things that you need to engage in to be good at those mm. games bear no resemblance really to um to each other so i wonder if the problems that we're having here around they are classed light and like a class as two or want people want to class them as two distinct things but actually there's so much overlap and interplay and both of their elements both elements from both of them have become so mainstream in a lot of video games that actually 
the is this the definitions mean anything anymore because we're comparing it to some old game that is mm. at this point largely removed from where things are going well so, hardly anybody that uses roguelike including me that uses roguelike or roguelite played the original rogue certainly didn't play it at the time I mean, i haven't played it since but i certainly didn't play it at the time it came out so we're using we're using a genre descriptor that we don't even really have full understanding. We have theoretical understanding of what it is, but we don't really have full understanding of having played it, what it felt like, what it meant at the time, its importance at the time or any of that, which is just an agreed upon set of labels for us to use. And, as, and How I mean, about we change it to <laughs> rogue likes are called start agains and rogue lights are called <laughs> carry ons. Well, it would certainly make them easier to say and easier to, easier to distinguish between when you're talking about them for sure. Um, I think as a last thing for me, I think the thinking about that, thinking about the labels, I think they're use. I still think they're useful descriptors because they simply to start a conversation or to have a frame of reference. I think that it's one of those things like have, you know, strong beliefs held lightly. Like it's a, it's a, we, I, I don't see the benefit or the importance of getting tied up in knots arguing about the distinctions between the two and oh no that game isn't that and here's 10 reasons why and why you're wrong and probably stupid and all the rest of it it's like we can just use it as a as a way of like talking about these things rather than distinguishing you know setting boundaries um because ultimately that's what a genre is isn't it like it's a collection of things that are more like each other than they are like other things but that doesn't mean there can't be great there can't be great shades of distinction between that that group. There's still things on this side of that group or this side of that group that are very different and unique to themselves. It's just that they're more like each other in this little bubble than they are like that bubble over there, which we're calling shooters or whatever. Like it's its own genre. And surely that's really the only reason to label them anything so that we can then have a conversation about it. Oh, what yeah, kind of game I- is that? It's the, it's, it's, it falls into the genre of horror and then it's like, oh, okay, let's dig deeper and find out actually what it is, you know, itself rather than what it is at the at the top level. Yeah, uh, I think where this is, where, yeah, and the reason why these two are difficult to talk about in, that, um, in those genre terms is because more than other genres, they are so, so, so similar. Um, mm. So, mm. so because they're so similar, uh, like, is it worth even defining them as so as certain as different genres and i think on the horror thing as well i think actually horror isn't a genre is it it's a theme it's a horror it's it's a it's a genre in movies Mm. but it's not i I wouldn't say that horror is a genre in video games it's a thematic it's not like outlast is an action game dead darkwoods is a survival game that's Mm -hmm. really what their 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 genres are um so then having two such similar genres as being distinct from each other um i don't know what that does to the conversation does it mean that okay well let's just all talk about let's only talk about rogue likes now because we're talking about that genre now and then after and tomorrow we'll talk about rogue Mm. lights but it's actually is it is there a point to that whereas actually they'd be better served by just having them as one genre that can all be spoken about even though they're not the same genre in in sort of the discourse of how we talk about genres mm. is it meaningful to have two genres that are so similar but discrete whereas we don't do that throughout any other genres really like first person shooters yeah. are still all first person shooters like even though nowadays you might say okay battle royale but then battle royale are not all shooters so that's a different <laughs> genre yeah as, as somebody per- so as, as on a personal level as somebody that enjoys both what would be considered a roguelike and a roguelite the distinction isn't meaningful to me because I'm not like if you told me about a game and you said it's a roguelike and I said, pardon, I didn't. Which one did you say? Because they both sound the same. And I wouldn't bother <laughs> yeah. me that but it's rogue- correct them <laughs> like rather than like. I'm not going to say, oh, it's a roguelike. Oh, in that case, I'm not interested. But if it's a roguelite, I am. You know, it's, it still comes down to what is the game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's not. I think if you if you like like I do, it seems if you love this sort of game these sorts of games they do offer something that other genres don't offer to me like i i will sit down and really want that 
that you know the rng of it the whole randomization of it the procedurally generated element of it um is a thing that i i relish there are examples of it being done badly and poorly and even lazily where it's just relied upon that you're going to die and you're going to go back in and there are you know we don't need to get into the sort of the bad examples of it um to name names but there are because there are so many good examples that that doesn't really matter but i do understand why some people will roll their eyes and say i'm sick and tired of roguelite so you know it's just it's been done to death yeah i get my fill of them i tend to be i tend to have had enough of them at a certain point and i won't play them for like a month and then i can come back Mm. again but that depends if i've been playing it like i was binging loop hero uh, it was like, oh, once I'd finished playing that, I was like, okay, I'm not playing a game like that for like two months now. <laughs> um, yeah. Or whatever. And now I've come back to Spelunky, so I guess here's a final thing from me. I start, I've been playing Spelunky 2. I'm rubbish at the game. I ain't ever going to complete it. I'm just not. <laughs> but so on like, a, on like a material level, I wish it was a rogue light. But on like a theoretical level, <laughs> it's like I'm happy with the way it is because yeah. maybe, maybe in two years time, I'll go back and I'll start playing it again and I won't have to, you know start a new game like i would on hades or whatever i just okay yeah can i do it now or can i be bothered to practice enough to be able to do it now yeah i want i do and okay and as a final thing for me because we really are out of time i wonder how much and maybe this is a spin-off thing but i wonder how much this speaks for us personally for you and i personally i wonder how much of this speaks to the way that we play games and what we want from games that i something really appeals to me about some about just one thing that i can go really really deep on to the exclusion of other stuff you know and perhaps to the there's a to the detriment perhaps of other stuff whereas you're more of a you prefer to like experience lots of things to a well to a less deep level in in the sense that you just you're spending less time on it. it doesn't mean you understand it any less but it just means your experience of it you don't want that deep an experience you don't want to keep going on the same thing whereas that is something that really appeals to me and maybe there's a you know the way that we play games is perhaps a different a separate conversation or oh, it is a separate conversation <laughs> it's a separate conversation <laughs> definitely because we're over now <laughs> um yeah i mean i guess i like to once i understand something i want to understand the next thing you know mm. like mm-hmm. that's kind of mm-hmm. Anyway, we are out of time. Um, so <laughs> thank you for listening. That was Rogue Like, Rogue Lights. Uh, you can get Please involved. like and subscribe. You can like, like. and subscribe on our Twitter. Like we are, yeah, uh, yeah, so you can go to our Twitter. We are at Indie by Design. You can uh, also find the link to our Discord channel there. We are at Indie by Design on all social media networks. So uh, get involved, follow us, come talk to us, come talk to us with us about Rogue Likes, Rogue lights what you like about them which is your uh favorite genre are they even two different genres uh and as ever you can go to anybodydesign.net where you can find information on and buy uh all the books we make about video games so thank you for listening and we'll see you again next week <laughs>